how to overcome the biggest objection of all. And I'm not talking about price. I'm talking about incumbency. The we're fine with what we've got or what we're doing as your customer. It's what you away like an annoying little fly. So what can you do to get them to listen to you? Hi, I'm Bree Williams, the behavior changer. In this video, I'm going to explain what to say to get your customer's attention and how to avoid getting the brush off. So what can you do to get them to listen to you? First, let's talk about why people try to give you the brush off. To start with, you are interrupting them. They were doing something and you have broken their flow. Not only is this annoying, it puts them immediately on the defensive because they don't know why you're calling. Another issue is they have already made a decision about whatever it is you want to talk with them about. After all, they already have a supplier. That means they are relieved that the decision has been made at some time by someone to do business with their current supplier. Not only have they moved on, they have a plate full of other more pressing issues to think about. This one is in the outbox. It's solved. It's done. And here you are coming along and forcing it back into the inbox. No, thank you. If it ain't broke, why fix it? On top of that, the last time they had to make a decision might have been excruciating for them. They probably don't have the energy to bother thinking about, let alone doing anything about changing things. And even if they contemplate a change, they will be worried about two things. Making the wrong choice. This might mean wasting money or time, or even worse, making them look like they don't know what they are doing. And having to break up with the incumbent with whom they might have a good relationship. It can be difficult to give bad news, so most of us would prefer not to. So that's a little of the backwash you need to swim through in order to get this prospective customer to even listen to you. It's a happy day when your call comes at the perfect time, of course. Usually that's when something has changed in their circumstances, like they've lost a client or there's a change in leadership. Or it's a new year and they have motivation to do things differently. It's a happy day when this happens, but a rare one. More commonly, inertia is going to answer your call with a side serving of defensiveness. How then to get through the barrier? How do you engage someone in those initial few seconds? Well, that's what I asked ChatGPT and here's what was suggested. Hello, my name's Bree and I work with people patterns. May I have a moment of your time to introduce myself and tell you a bit about our solution? Customer. Okay. Good one, chat GPT. Very funny. But seriously, here's the more likely response when you cold call. It won't be okay you'll be hearing. It is much more likely to be no thanks. So to avoid being shut down, this is what you should say. Hi, Sam, this is Bree from People Patterns. Is this a bad time? Interestingly, most people will say no to being asked, is this a bad time? Why? Because they are already on the phone. They've bothered to answer. If they do say, yes, it is a bad time, then you can ask when would suit them. To this, they'll probably inquire what it's about, so be ready with an answer, but more on that in a moment. Unfortunately, instead of, is this a bad time, the question most people ask is, is this a good time? The problem with this question is it is easy to say no to. Remember, you are interrupting them. They are already doing something, even if it's watching YouTube. It's very easy for them to generate reasons why now is not ideal. So is it a good time? No. Instead, when you ask, is this a bad time? Well, there are worse times that you could have called. So probably not bad, no. By admitting it's not a bad time, they have effectively agreed to hear what you have to say. There's something else you can say to improve your odds of them being receptive. 
the name drop. To further improve your odds they will listen in those first few seconds, bolster your initial introduction with a referral. Here's an example. Hi Sam, this is Bree from People Patterns. Chris Smith suggested I give you a call. Is this a bad time? Now, who is this mysterious referrer? It could be the receptionist, an ex-colleague, a client, or a mutual LinkedIn contact. The closer and more esteemed the relationship, the better. If they haven't actually referred you, try this variation. Hi Sam, this is Bree from People Patterns. I was thinking of Chris Smith, so I thought I'd give you a call. Is this a bad time? Now, if they say it is a bad time and ask you what it's concerning, what should you say? Before we get into that, I want to let you know that this video is a sample of content from my Just Do This online program. In Just Do This, I show you exactly how to apply behavioral science to everyday business issues, like acquiring and retaining customers and staff. You get live sessions with me, templates, scripts, and new content every month. Join today at briewilliams.com. Now, let's talk about what to say if they ask you what your call is concerning. Here's what you should say. Chris Smith suggested I call because, or in thinking about Chris Smith, and this might be completely off base, but I thought I'd give you a call because, for example, they thought you'd be interested in the approach we're using to manage their inventory. It saves them significant amount of time or money. Or because we'll be in your area next week and are offering free appraisals. Would Tuesday or Wednesday afternoon be best for you? Or because we offer a free benchmarking service that dot, dot, dot. Or because I've just published some new research on XYZ and I thought it would be of interest. What's your best email and I can arrange to send it to you. Your objective as they rush you off the phone is to get an in so you can restart the conversation next time. Ideally, that's time in the diary, but at the very least an email address or point of contact. You might have noticed I used the phrase completely off base in my response. This serves the role of diffusing tension. It makes you seem vulnerable and a little uncertain and it increases the odds they will reciprocate by saying, or at least thinking, no, you're actually not off base. Now, let's imagine you have gotten through those first few seconds. They're listening. What should you say now? Well, that's where I have to leave things because you are not yet a just do this member. Remember, it's easy to join at freewilliams.com. But as we've seen with the we're already sorted thanks objection, inertia is your enemy. Our role is to gently lower the customer's defensive wall so they are open to considering new ideas. By approaching it in an inquisitive, humble manner, we are more likely to engage their interest in hearing more. See you next time.